Now it's time for Rupert's Royal Roundup. Rupert's Royal Roundup. Whipper, good morning. Good morning. Got me up earlier this week. What's I'm going so on? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. A uh, lot's going on though, and actually, it was interesting. The King is everywhere this morning. Uh, front page of the Sunday Telegraph. Um, the King takes great comfort from support of the nation. It's echoed across many of the front pages this morning as well. Yes, and he's made issued a statement and basically thanking everybody for the well wishes, and also highlighting the fact that he is. Um, very uh, well encouraged by the fact him announcing that he had cancer and indeed his uh, enlarged prostate has had a, a really beneficial effect now you both know that this will have been a really positive thing that if you're getting awareness out there for the issues that he's been suffering from it can only be a good thing and bearing in mind it's not something the royal family used to do um, it is certainly setting a trend and can only be seen as a positive impact on on people with cancer or people who are not sure whether they have or haven't at least getting them to go out and find out so you have to say what the king has done has been very good and that's part of the message that he released uh, from from uh, the buckingham palace thanking everybody for their well wishes as well and it will be interesting to see this time last week he was out at church at sandringham he would have already known he'd had uh, cancer at that stage. Will we see him at church today in Sandringham, uh, where he is currently? Uh, I also I wonder what you make of whether it's made him far more human, actually. I think the public has really warmed to him because he has shown that he is human. He has shared his innermost thoughts about being diagnosed. I think he's also given hope to many other people who are struggling with that. And I think he also typifies the reaction you have when you have cancer. Your whole world falls apart. You have no idea what happens next. You have to take everything sequentially and you have to take it step by step. Do you think it's, you know, in many ways made, made him more approachable? I, I think it's actually been a, a very positive thing in the sense that when he uh, obviously became king, no one quite sure how he was going to make his mark and how easy would it be to fill the shoes left by his late mother and and i have to say this is a very positive thing because he's actually having helping his citizens his subjects in many ways by being so open he has done something positive and seemed to have a positive impact and some the power of maybe his position as head of state and our monarch so i think it has to be seen in a positive light it's good for him and i i think the the, I have heard no naysayers at all uh, and with regard to him and making these announcements. Of course, we don't know the actual details of what kind of cancer he's got, and we don't need necessarily to know that. But what we do need to know is he's got it because obviously he's not being able to fulfill his duties and that he's going through his treatment and that it's a, a positive thing and that he, he is going to get on with his life as much as he can, however difficult it, whatever the treatment is and how it manifests itself. You'll know better than I, but every cancer treatment can take very form, different forms and affect people in different ways. So obviously uh, the King being incapacitated will have an impact on, on William. What are your thoughts on that? Because Rene and I were talking about this earlier. We haven't heard anything from Kate at all. We know that obviously she had what we think is quite a serious procedure, a serious operation. She's now recuperating and obviously that weighs heavily on William. His priority is to his family uh, and I think that's absolutely right and just. But obviously he must be sort of struggling trying to balance the family with actually what his royal duties are. Yeah, and we saw him fulfil some duties last week, holding an investiture on Wednesday. Then he went to a, a London Air Ambulance fundraiser where Tom Cruise was was at. So, And this week is half-term week, which he would normally take off anyway. So they are in Norfolk at Amna Hall, the, the residence that they have there, which is uh, on the Sandringham Estate. So uh, it, they're, they're all there together, as it were. For, 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 for And so that's probably a positive thing for for William, but he is going to have to find a way of getting back out there. Now, it's obviously encouraging that he was able to go last week because he wants to be there for uh, for Kate as much as possible, but obviously her recovery is uh, continuing and obviously in a positive way. We don't know exactly, but we he knows with the fact that the royal family are now having to put a line through their diary and sort of almost say, well, what can we do now? And, and bearing in mind, William is the only 
well, him and Kate are the only two working royals under 50. So there was a great deal of pressure on the older members. And we've seen that this week with uh, Queen Camilla driving six hours from Sandringham to fulfill an engagement in Salisbury. Normally she'd take a helicopter, but the weather deemed it uh, unsafe. So, but she still went out and did it. The Princess Royal has been flitting all over the country. Yesterday, she was at Murrayfield watching Scotland lose agonizingly in the last minute. I'm sure she was harumphing about the TMO um, over dinner last night. And Scotland were deprived in the last minute, but she has been all over the country uh, this last week. So, but she, she never shirks her responsibility. She just gets on with it. But it is causing them problems. But William is going to have to try and find a, a way of juggling a work-life balance, just like many other families out there are going through the same thing. Half-term week, right, children's schedule. We've all been there. We know it's an absolute minefield. Who can you carry on working? What do you do? Mm. So it, the King is, uh, and Prince, well, uh, Prince of Wales is no different but he's going to have to, at some stage, be seen out and about. Do you think there's any sort of sense of regret on the part of the king for slimming down the royal family? I mean, it's, it, this is when you need that extended royal family to make sure the commitments are upheld. Also, just in terms of those really important royal visits to ensure uh, the future of the Commonwealth, for example. Well, let's be honest, he had no choice about uh, <laughs> two of them. Um, his hand was forced. One decided to go and live in uh, 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 America, and, and the Duke of York... Uh, created some uh, serious PR problems. So um, it's been hoisted on him a bit. So he's got to find a way of navigating a way through that. He wanted a slim down monarchy, but what he didn't expect is that he would not be able to fulfill his duties and that his uh, daughter-in-law is also uh, recovering from serious surgery because that puts the team that is a small one under increasing pressure. And you're right, there were state visits planned and clearly they're now all on hold. Um, until we know exactly uh, that they're more feeling 100% to fulfil their duties. But the king will want to be out there as quickly as possible because he doesn't like sitting around twiddling his thumbs.